I'd like to welcome everybody that's joined our Zoom meeting. Um, I'm sure we're going to still have more people coming in, but we are getting a number of people entering right now. So I'd like to welcome you all um, to this presentation that's being given by a representative of the Louisiana Educational Loan Authority. Her name is um, Ms. Carmichael. She's a very helpful support to us um, as senior counselors, to Ms. Johnson and me, in helping you to get your financial aid applications in. Um, before I turn the meeting over to her, I'd like to speak to the parents and let them know what's been going on in the background. Hopefully you have been receiving some robocalls from Mr. Priola with information um, and also emails. If you have not been receiving robocalls or emails, please call Mrs. Polk at school and ask her to update your information in JPANS. Uh, as far as the students go, every one of our students now has their own personal email. It's a school, not a personal email, rather a school email. And I have told the students, I've visited them all this week and have told them that um, that is one of the main ways that I'm going to be communicating with them. I've already sent a few emails to the students notifying them about such things as college fairs, um, the documents needed to um, complete the FAFSA. Uh, Mrs. Johnson, who is a very good support to the guidance department, has created a Google Classroom for me that we are posting everything in that Google Classroom. Your child should be able to get you to that Google Classroom on their Chromebooks and uh, let you take a look at it from time to time. I encourage the students to check their emails at least once a week. Uh, during the fall season, it's really better if they're checking it almost daily. And if you would like to see the emails that they're getting, then certainly uh, you can ask them to share that with you. Um, the Google Classroom has a lot of documents posted on it. It's all of the things that we normally would be saying to students were we having a you know, non-COVID fall for our seniors. So those are the two major ways that I'm communicating with the students is through that Google Classroom and their emails, their school emails. So I do encourage you to be picking their brains. I know that they don't always go home and tell parents everything that we're doing in school, but we are actively engaged um, in giving them the information that they need. Uh, tonight, the purpose of this is to uh, have, uh, give parents a presentation on how to complete the free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA. Um, I need to re reiterate to parents and to students that completing the FAFSA is a state of Louisiana graduation requirement. So it is very important that students uh, get this done and get it done correctly. It is awesome to get it done quickly because the financial aid packages are going to start being prepared by the uh, education, the whatever learning institution your student is considering going to. So for two reasons, we want you to get this done as soon as possible. One is it gives me the opportunity to um, mark in the state system that the student has met the graduation requirement for completing the FAFSA, and it also opens up the world of financial aid, including TOPS, uh, for your students. So with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Ms. Carmichael. Ms. Carmichael will be available to us uh, on an as needed basis throughout the year. She helps us to solve problems that students are having with um, getting the FAFSA completed because situations can be different from person to person. So with that said, um, I will be hooking you up with her if we need to do that. And uh, we will be helping you to get the FAFSA completed. Our goal as a senior class, especially with things being so crazy at the beginning of this year, is to get this done in the month of October. So I encourage you, at, you actually can start doing it tonight if you want to. Um, the students have their FSA IDs. That's part of what we did in classes during the week. So um, with that said, Anne, I'm turning them over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Shea. And um, 
to avoid distractions. Oh, we still have some people coming in. To avoid distractions, I've turned everyone's audio and video off. So let's just make sure that those remain um, turned off during the meeting. Okay, can everybody see my um, presentation? I can see it, yes. Great. Okay, I want each of you, I'm sure you're uh, familiar with Zoom by now, but I want you to know that you can use the Zoom chat box. If you will um, just take a look down at the bottom um, of your screen, you will be able to use that. As I work through the presentation, you can um, drop your questions in there and at the end of the presentation, I'll be happy to address those. Okay, I'm Ann Carmichael, as Ms. Shea mentioned, and I'm a student financial aid consultant with Leela. Um, hopefully by the end of the presentation, my goal will be to to make you more familiar with the financial aid process. As I'm sure that you know, and Ms. Shea just reiterated, the Louisiana Department of Education asks that the class of 2021 submit the free application for federal student aid as a requirement for graduation. And this just ensures that your money is ready and waiting for you when you begin college in the fall. Because it is expensive, we want to make you aware of so that you can begin to prepare for the cost of pursuing your post-secondary education. These costs include equipment, books and supplies, personal expenses, room and board, tuition and fees. But the good news is that financial aid is available from the U.S. Department of Education, our state government in the form of the TOPS scholarship, your college or career school, nonprofit and private organizations. Every year, the federal government provides more than $120 billion in student financial aid, and quite a lot of that does go unawarded. So we all just wanna make sure that you're receiving your portion. Types of federal student aid include the federal Pell Grant, the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Teacher Educational Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant, the Iraq and Afghanistan Service Grant, Federal Work Study, and direct subsidized, unsubsidized, and PLUS loans. Federal student aid grants are a form of financial aid that does not have to be repaid. And it does include the Pell Grants for undergraduates with financial need, FSEOGs for undergraduates with exceptional financial need, service grants for students of military parents who died defending the US following 9-11, and TEACH grants for students pursuing a career in education. Oops. The Federal Work Study Program provides part-time jobs to help pay for your education expenses. 
So when you tell the financial aid office that you're interested in federal work study, you'll be considered for this program. Um, your earnings are going to be paid directly to you and you should use those to help pay your college expenses. This is a fantastic program. It will help you reduce your student loan debt. You can work on campus, um, perhaps in the department that you're studying. It's great on your resume once you graduate. So be sure and select yes, you're interested in federal work study when you're completing your FAFSA. Direct subsidized loans are based on financial need and no interest is charged until you graduate or cease to attend. Almost everyone's eligible for unsubsidized loans regardless of financial need, but the interest on these loans begins to accrue once they're fully dispersed and then throughout the life of the loan. So there's a big difference between direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans and you will probably see both on your award letters. Just be sure that you are accepting the subsidized loans first because remember the you and unsubsidized it means you always pay that interest. If loans are offered, only accept um, Try to accept the federal student loans first. Payment on these loans um, isn't due until you graduate or cease to attend. The interest rate is fixed at a lower rate and no credit check is required. Private loans, on the other hand, should be accepted only as needed because most of these require payments to be made while you're still in school the interest rate could be variable and it's often a lot higher and they almost always require a cosigner. Students and families do need to do their research before selecting a private loan lender um, because interest rates and incentives to borrow are going to vary. So to dispel the myth, almost everybody is eligible for some type of student aid. All federal student aid and most institutional and private aid is contingent upon completion of the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA, which launches today of, and, it's, and it has to be renewed on an annual basis as long as you're going to be in college. Student financial aid is awarded on a first come first served basis so you wanna get your FAFSA submitted as soon as possible. Remember to pay close attention to the deadlines. You wanna meet your FAFSA deadline set forth by your college, by the state government, by federal student aid, and by your counselor as well. And you wanna begin the FAFSA process by collecting all of the documents needed to complete the form. These include the student and parents social security cards because the FSA ID or the federal student aid ID and the FAFSA must reflect the names and numbers exactly as printed on your most recent card, even if your name has changed. Um, it's so important to have these documents in front of you ready to go. We, because if there are any errors made, this is usually where they are made and you, uh, it'll take a lot more effort to correct your mistakes after you've submitted the FAFSA. Have your 2019 federal income tax returns in front of you because to use the IRS data retrieval tool, you must enter your name and address exactly as it's printed on the tax return. Unlike um, when you're using your social security cards to, to um, complete your FSA ID and your FAFSA, for the IRS data retrieval tool, they want to know what's on your IRS tax form from 2019. Even if your name is misspelled on this form or you've moved since you filed it, 
If you don't have a copy of your tax return from 2019, contact your tax preparer and try to get a duplicate copy. And if not, uh, request a tax transcript from the IRS. You'll need your W-2s because there is information on the W-2 that may not be listed on your tax return. And you need bank statements and records of your investments because you have to report the balances of these accounts as of the date you submit your FAFSA. And I like to just grab my accounts, do a screenshot, print those and keep them in a file just in case I'm asked for that information later. Begin creating the federal student aid um, because it's going to allow the students and parents to identify themselves electronically when accessing federal student aid websites such as the FAFSA. The FSA ID consists of a unique username and password created by you and should reflect only your personal information. Now I understand that at school, Students have been working with their counselors to create their own IDs. Um, mom or dad or both, you can talk to your child and perhaps they can help you along with yours as well. You don't want to use any information that is used on someone else's ID. So if your student has entered your mobile phone as their alternate phone or you're trying to enter the student's mobile phone as yours, you are going to have trouble signing the FAFSA. So if you have, um, if you don't have a landline, say, to enter as your alternate phone, just leave that alternate phone number blank and only use your own personal information. Your username and password is your official electronic signature. So you want to make sure you're jotting it down and you're keeping it in a secure place and not sharing it with anyone. If you don't have access to a computer, you can download the FAFSA mobile app. It's called My Student Aid, and you can use it to submit your FAFSA on your mobile phone or any device. But if you do have access to a computer and you feel more comfortable with the web-based version, I know that I do. The students like to use the mobile um, applications and that's great because um, you can work independently. You can be working on the web-based version or on your mobile app and the student can be working independently on his as well. Begin the FAFSA by logging in with the student's FSA ID, because the FAFSA is the student's application for federal student aid. The parent ID is going to be used to transfer tax information into the FAFSA and then to sign the student's FAFSA. And I was talking to Ms. Shea about this earlier, going back just um, a bit about the FSA ID. Mom and dad, if you have an older child who you completed a FAFSA for, you may have already created an FSA ID. So make sure that you are either going back and reviewing your records to find out what you used as your username and password, or let me go back one. Here at the bottom, you can see that there are two tabs. There's a create an ID, if you've never created one before, then there's a manage my FSA ID. So if you've created an ID in the past for yourself, but you're not sure what it is, you can use this website to retrieve that information. The high school class of 2021 should be completing the 2021-2022 FAFSA because that is the academic year that you are applying for financial aid. And this is, can be confusing. I had a mom that called today. She got an early start and she completed the 2021 for her senior this year and submitted it. And she now is going to have to go in and complete the 21-22. So make sure you're selecting the correct FAFSA. 
there are eight sections that should be completed before submitting the form. The student demographics, the school selection section, dependency status, This is great. I'm still I'm still admitting people to the meeting. So that's wonderful. So the dependency status, parent demographics, parent financials and student financials, then it's time to sign and submit and review your confirmation page. As you're moving through your FAFSA, should you need clarification? Look over to the right hand side and beside each question, you're going to see a question mark. Click on the question mark for um, information on exactly what they expect you to enter in that field. There are hyperlinks available throughout the form. Click on those if you're not sure um, what they're asking you for. You can request a FAFSA online chat. You can call federal student aid or Leela's FAFSA helpline. But for this session, I'm going to cover just the most commonly asked FAFSA questions. If you do have a question that I don't address tonight, if you wanna drop it in the chat box, um, I'll be happy to answer it at the end of the presentation, or if you prefer, you can email me and I'll respond to you individually. The citizenship requirement. Um, the student must be a citizen or eligible non-citizen to complete a FAFSA. But if his parents are neither, they're going to enter zeros anywhere a social security number is requested. Um, then the student is going to manually print out a signature page, sign it, and mail it into federal student aid. If you have questions about this, or you're not sure and you're in this situation, feel free to um, email me or call me on the helpline. Only the colleges that you list on the FAFSA um, in the school selection section will consider you for student financial aid. So add all of the schools that you're considering. You can add up to 10 at a time. And if you're applying to more than 10, there are specific instructions in this section to help you with that. To determine your dependency status, you'll be asked to consider 10 questions. Will you be 24 or older by January 1st of the school year for which you're applying for financial aid? Are you married or separated but not divorced? Will you be working on a graduate degree? Do you have children who receive more than half of their support from you? Do you have dependents other than children or a spouse who live with you and receive more than half of their support from you? Are you currently serving on active duty in the US Armed Forces for purposes other than training? And this excludes boot camp and basic training. Are you a veteran of the US Armed Forces? At any time since you turned 13, were both of your parents deceased? Were you in foster care? Or were you a ward or dependent of the court? Are you an emancipated minor? Or are you in legal guardianship as determined by a court? And legal custody is not always considered legal guardianship. So make sure you're reviewing your documents before you um, answer that question. Are you an unaccompanied youth who is homeless? Are you self-supporting and at risk of being homeless? If you can answer yes to just one of these questions and you can provide a legal document supporting this claim, then you will be considered an independent student for FAFSA purposes, and you will not be required to provide parental information. For FAFSA purposes, you're not considered an independent student simply because you file your own taxes or you live alone and support yourself. 
who is my parent when I fill out the FAFSA? And this is the most commonly asked question. The parent or parents that you've lived with the longest in the past 12 months should be listed on your FAFSA. So if you live with both of your biological parents, you're gonna list both of them. If the parent you lived with the longest in the past 12 months is separated, divorced, or was never married, you should list that parent on the FAFSA. However, if that parent is remarried, you should include his or her spouse. In other words, federal student aid wants to know the financial standing of the household that the student has lived in the longest in the prior 12 months before submitting the FAFSA. If you're identified as a dependent student, but your parents refuse to provide their information on your FAFSA, simply answer, I'm unable to provide information about my parents, state that you don't have a special circumstance, and submit your FAFSA without parental information, but you have to contact the financial aid office to discuss your situation. Um, federal student aid does not award um, financial aid. The college financial aid offices are going to do that. So if you're not communicating with them about your situation, they're not going to know and you're only going to be considered for federal student loans. To expedite the processing of your federal student aid, the student and parents need to use the IRS data retrieval tool to provide their income information. If either the parent or the student did not file a return in 2019, they're going to select not going to file or will file and then enter their information manually. If you did not earn working wages in 2019, you're going to enter zeros here. Using the IRS data retrieval tool can greatly diminish your chances of being selected for verification by the financial aid office. So if you have trouble using this tool, please call Federal Student Aid or call our FAFSA helpline and we can help you through this process. You'll be glad you did once your FAFSA is submitted. Using the 2019 Federal Income Tax Return, enter your name and address exactly as it's printed on your return. As I mentioned before, even if it's misspelled or you've moved since you filed. And then you're almost finished. But before submitting your FAFSA, it's important to review your student aid report. This report reflects all of the questions you were asked and your answers to each of them. So a review of it is going to ensure that the financial aid office receives accurate information so that your aid can be processed timely. The student and one of his parents should sign the FAFSA using their FSA IDs. If, you have, if you're having trouble signing your FSA ID, your FAFSA with the ID, it's probably an issue with your ID. You'll need to log back into the ID at the FSA ID website and just verify that there were no errors made there and then attempt to sign again. But if you are having trouble, there's always help. Don't, and don't um, be discouraged, just ask for help. So one of the last steps in the FAFSA process is reviewing your FAFSA confirmation page. And you'll wanna take a close look at this. This page is going to pop up once you submit your FAFSA but it's also going to be sent to you in the form of an email. It's going to go to the student's email. So if mom and dad want to take a look at it, you'll need to ask the uh, students for permission to view it. But you'll see the steps that need to be taken once the form is submitted. 
there are some additional uh, steps that are going to have to be taken to complete the student financial aid process. You'll see a list of the colleges that you listed on your FAFSA. These are the schools that are going to receive your FAFSA data. Review your expected estimated family contribution. And then take a look at your financial aid estimates. And I'm going to emphasize the word estimate because these are just estimates. Each college financial aid office is going to verify the information you've submitted and they will determine your aid on their campus. Once your FAFSA is fully processed, it's then shared with your colleges. Then each college financial aid office will begin to identify any aid that you might be able to receive on their campus. If your family's financial situation has changed since 2019, you'll want to contact each financial aid office because they've got the ability to adjust your aid by using their own professional judgment. They may not be able to, they are going to ask you for um, supporting documentation. This is basically an appeal process. Um, I would encourage you if you've had a layoff or you um, or someone has been ill in your family or there's a death in your family, um, definitely contact the financial aid office because they are there to assist you and they can make some adjustments. Your net price is going to be determined by each office by subtracting any grants and scholarships that you might be eligible for from your cost of attendance. Then the net price can be paid in cash or by accepting student loans to pay that balance. Your student financial aid offer should reflect the college's cost of attendance and any grants, scholarships, work study, and student loans that you've been offered. So you'll want to read the offer very carefully and respond to any requests so that your aid can be processed. Remember, you're going to be receiving a separate financial aid offer from each of the schools that you've listed on your FAFSA. Accept your financial aid in this order, scholarships and grants, this is gift aid and does not have to be repaid. Federal work study is earned money that doesn't have to be paid back. And then loans, this is borrowed money that you have to repay and repay with interest. The student financial aid process is explained in detail in Leela's FAFSA Completion Guide and Workbook for the class of 2021. And Ms. Shea has told me that Ms. Johnson has dropped the, all this information into your Google Classroom. So students check this out and share it with your parents because they're gonna be an important part of the financial aid process. It's a free resource, so please take advantage of it. And use Leela's senior checklist to stay on track this year. Most importantly, scholarships. These are gifts that don't have to be repaid, and there are thousands of them offered by schools and employers, private companies and nonprofits, um, social organizations. Some scholarships will be need-based, and some are going to be based on financial need. Some might cover the entire cost of your tuition. Others could be a one-time award of just a few hundred dollars. But either way, it's going to be worth applying for them because it's going to reduce the cost of your education. Check out your counselor's office for information about scholarships. And also your college financial aid offices are a great resource. This year, Leela offers two scholarship opportunities, a $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarship for seniors attending a Louisiana high school and a $1,000 Choose Louisiana scholarship for students attending a Louisiana college. This information is also in your guide, but you can get the details at leela.org. 
and for students or parents who need help paying for college after accepting all of the scholarships, grants, federal and state dollars. Leela has a nonprofit student loan product this year, and you can find out more about that at leelachoice.org. Your questions are welcomed, and now's the time to ask them. I see about 24 uh, messages in the chat box. So if you want to continue to drop your questions there, I'm going to take a look at those in just a minute. If you want to call our FAFSA helpline, the number is here. It's listed in your guide, and I'm sure your counselor has it on hand as well if you need to get in touch with us. And my email address is available to you. So please remember that you need to complete your FAFSA as soon as possible and apply for that $1,000 scholarship. I'm going to take a look in the chat box. Oh, this is great. Well, a lot of you are corresponding with each other, which is good because I know you haven't been able to see each other as much as you usually do. Let's see if we can find a question about financial aid. Oh, somebody was having trouble hearing us. I know who that is, Ann. I'm going to email her. Good. She emailed me on the side, too. Okay, very good. I don't see any questions specifically about student financial aid. Does anybody have an idea? Does anybody? Okay, here we go. So when we click the 2020, 21, or the 21, 22, yes, you're going to want to select the 21, 22 FAFSA, because that is the year that you're going to be in college. That's the FAFSA you're going to want to complete. Okay. I may not have my W-2s from last year and I file my own taxes and I'm assuming this is a student. Um, if you do not have your W-2s, you can contact your employer and ask for a duplicate copy. Um, if you're not able to get a copy from your employer, the fact that you are probably a single person that only complete that completed a tax return, you may not have to use your W-2. So try to get started using your tax return. Which number return could be this? Try to uh, use your tax return, and if you are, you do find that you need your W-2, then you'll have to go back to your employer and ask for that. So what if I worked this year? Do I put that down because I worked all summer? What's going to happen? Me, um, Ann, can we go back to that last question? I just got a text from Kim saying that that is a parent. And uh, she says to tell them that they can import the taxes. It's a parent that was asking that question about the W-2 apparently. Okay. You so, can um, use the IRS data retrieval tool to import your uh, tax information. If there's additional information that they needed from their W-2, then they would have to contact their tax preparer for that. But everyone should be trying to use the um, IRS data retrieval tool. That's, that's a good comment, Ms. Johnson. Okay, so for the person who said they worked this year, what's going to uh, be asked for is your 2019 income information. So if you worked in 2000, if you worked in 2020, 
Don't worry about that information at this point. If you worked any time during 2019, that will be the information that you will have to, to um, provide on this FAFSA. Okay, here's one. Do both parents need an FSA ID? And that's a great question. One parent signs the FAFSA, so only one parent FSA ID is needed. Oh, I see, yes, she says she is the parent. If I'm the stepmom, would I be able to sign the tax document since I'm listed on them? Or would his dad have to sign? So you're the stepmom and you live with dad and this child lives with you. As the stepmom, you're gonna be listed on the FAFSA. So yes, you could sign his FAFSA and you could have the FSA ID. Either parent, either you or dad. What if one parent isn't in the picture? If you, if your parents are separated, divorced, or were never married, then you are going to provide information about that parent that you live with. And you don't have to worry about the other parent who is not in the picture. Even if they're, um, now if, if the parents are still married and one of them is not in the picture, unfortunately, you're going to have to provide information on both parents. But if they're separated, then you can disregard that person's information. Okay, so this student says, I worked in 2019, but did not file taxes. Well, I still need my W-2s because I do not have them. And that answer to that question is yes. You need to have um, that for your FAFSA. You need to report the amount of money that you did earn. So number one, I would contact your employer um, who provided you with that W-2 for the 2019 tax year. Um, in the meantime, if you can go back through your bank statements or if you have records of deposits of cash that you received from your, that employer for that year, you could use that information to estimate. You could go ahead and estimate how much you earned in 2019, get your FAFSA submitted, and then continue to pursue getting those W-2s so you can report exactly how much you earned. Um, and in that case, once you get the W-2, you're gonna log back into your FAFSA and make that FAFSA correction. We need W-2s even if we're under 18. Yes, if you worked and received a W-2, uh, some students may start working at 16 um, or before that. You do need to report any income you received in the tax year 2019. Does anyone else have a question? Michelle, can you think of any other words of advice for students as they're going through the process? Um, the one thing, and I don't know if this is still the case, but remember in the past for the state to get connected with who belongs to me and to get them on that spreadsheet, when they put in the name of their school, we were told to use the drop down menu, don't type in Pearl River High School do the search for the school and click on Pearl River from that drop down. I don't know if it's still the case that that's an issue, but we may as well do it that way just to be sure. Uh, I know that's not as much you as it is internal to us in the way that we account for who's met the graduation requirement or not. And I think I've, I've heard that they have resolved those issues, but it okay. is always a good idea to type in your use or use the drop down box type in the name of the high school first and then there's a little search bar that says confirm click on confirm 
it converts what you've typed into the official school name. And that's what federal student aid wants to be able to process your FAFSA and make sure that your high school gets the information. I have shared custody of my child and he just moved in with me in June and the father does not want to provide any info. Do I submit all of my info? So you and dad are divorced. You have custody of the child, but he's just moving in with you in June. I would ask you who the child lived with the longest in the past 12 months. So where we're, we're at October. So go back to last October and determine who the child lived with the longest. If he's been full time with you since June, that tells me that you probably have had him the longest. Um, but just, you'll have to justify that to the financial aid office. Um, whoever that parent is, that's, the person who needs to provide their information on the FAFSA. If dad is not going to, um, if dad is refusing to provide his information, if I were you, I would go ahead and use your information and then be prepared to discuss the situation with the financial aid office once the FAFSA is submitted. And if you wanna follow up with me afterwards, you can definitely give me a call or, or, or send me an email. We can talk about it in uh, more specific terms. So, Anne, I think we skipped one. Um, Dixie weighed back in again and said, what if they never sent you a W-2? Uh, Dixie, wh whoever the student is, um, I invite you to send me an email and I will uh, call you into my office and we'll see what we can do about that. And, and how to resolve it. Sometimes it's difficult to get W-2s from a past employer. I don't know why. Uh, legally, they do have to provide you with the information, <clears throat> but it can be challenging. Well, sometimes so if, I know I've done this for students in the past when an employer was being difficult, um, I made the call myself. So I, I'm willing to do that if that helps to Dixie. Sometimes hearing from a school counselor maybe <laughs> gets some results. I don't know, I've done it once or twice before and we did get good results, so. That's wonderful. And th this does remind you that for the next, well, you should always be retaining copies of your tax return in W-2s in case you're audited or for any other purpose, but definitely for federal student aid. So this year, when you do file your tax return, make sure you're keeping a copy for yourself. Okay, that might be the end of our question period. Um, Oh, looks like one more uh -oh. came in. Oh, that's a thank you. The thank yous are very nice to hear, folks. Thank you. I know Ms. Carmichael appreciates that, too. Absolutely, and you need to be thanking your counselors because you do not realize how much work this is. Um, filing one FAFSA is, is tedious, but when you're, when you're having hundreds of them to be responsible for and making sure everything's submitted uh, correctly, um, it's quite a task. So thank you, Ms. Shea and Ms. Johnson. Well, thank you, that's nice to hear. Um, I, I do have a couple of um, closing things that I wanna mention. Um, I did mention to the students that once they submit their, their FAFSA and they get that confirmation page or the email that they will get afterwards, um, through the student email, you will receive a confirmation. I would just like to remind the students and make sure the parents understand that that email must be forwarded to me because I'm the one that has to go into the state system and indicate that you have met that graduation requirement. And that is my evidence that the requirement was met. So once you get your confirmation page, please make sure that you forward it to me. Um, the other comment I have is that Ms. Carmichael was kind enough to record this session 
and she's going to make send uh, me and Ms. Johnson the link. As soon as we get the link, we will put that information on my Google Classroom page. If you would like me to send it directly to you, you can always email me and I'll see to it that you get uh, the presentation in case you want to go back and review any parts of it that you may have missed. All right. Uh, it looks like that's it, Ann. I'd like to thank you on behalf of my students and parents. I'd like to thank you also for doing this for us. And uh, you know you'll be hearing from us as we need to. You get Very plenty good. of thank yous now. This is why I told you I love my kids. <laughs> I know. This you is a great a group. You have a great <laughs> community here. And thank good you. luck to each of you. And Ms. Shea, I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, good night, everyone. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I'll get to you as soon as I can. I'm still running a little bit behind, but I, I'll, I'll get to you eventually. Good night. Uh, good night, everybody.